Well, in general, we speak up against uh, what is happening in Palestine, against this entire occupation, because this is against our religion. This is against the interests of our people. Uh, it happens to be that basics of Jewish belief uh, says that Jewish people are forbidden to create a sovereign homeland for themselves, even without any crimes to it. But when this happens in Palestine by oppressing, occupying an entire people, this is simply a violation of so many other laws within Judaism. This is not Judaism, this is not the Jewish people. We have Jewish people at the world over who refuse to be represented by this so-called state of Israel, so-called Jewish state. And we uh, oppose the existence of the state of Israel and all criminal actions taking uh, taken by the state of Israel against the Palestinian people. But today we are here more specific uh, uh, of, uh, uh, because what Israel is doing to our Jewish anti-Zionist community in Israel, uh, where we had a delegation of, uh, of uh, anti-Zionist Jews from Jerusalem visiting the Palestinian refugee camp in Jenin uh, as a meeting of peace, uh, expressing solidarity with the suffering people and delivering the message uh, of, from the Jewish, from the anti-Zionist Jewish community in total opposition to this entire occupation. Unfortunately, what the extreme Israeli regime decided to do is they couldn't stand this statement that Jews and Palestinians can live in peace. Because if we can live in peace, there is no need for a state of Israel. And they uh, ordered Ben Gavir, who is the famous uh, pro-settler extremist in the new Israeli extreme government, he ordered the police to arrest the members of this delegation. We are here pleading with world leaders to put pressure on Israel to stop the occupation in its entirety, to stop uh, and to, to, to release immediately all political prisoners, including the anti-Zionist Jews. We have called this press conference here in front of the United Nations headquarters in New York City because, because of an incident that happened now, which is not the first, and we hope it will be the last, where in addition to all crimes that is being done to the Palestinian people on a regular basis, and in addition to the harassment of the Israeli government against the anti-Zionist Jewish community in occupied Palestine in the Holy Land, what happened now is that uh, some activists, we are talking about religious Jewish anti-Zionist activists, were arrested for their peaceful activism for peace in opposition to the occupation of Palestine and the activities to work towards peace. Last week, there was a delegation of anti-Zionist Jews that traveled from Jerusalem to the refugee, to Palestinian refugee camp in Jenin. They met with the residents of the refugee camp. They met with Mr. Al-Akras, who was a political prisoner, who was on a 103 days hunger strike. This was in 2020. He was released. And the Jewish and a Jewish delegation met him in hospital while he was on the hunger strike. That at the time was a very strong statement showing that there is a strong community in Palestine who disagrees with the occupation and disagrees with the entire movement of Zionism. At the time it was very powerful and this delegation continued last week for the second time to visit Mr. al Akras again, together with other residents of the refugee camp. The statement of this meeting was extraordinary. It was special. The Jewish delegation expressed their solidarity with the suffering people of Palestine, especially the suffering people in the refugee camp. They expressed their total opposition to the entire occupation of Palestine and their refusal to be represented by the State of Israel. The residents of the refugee camp expressed their respect for the Jewish community and they made a statement to show that they have nothing against Jews or against the Jewish religion.
They did express their hurt, their pain. They did express their experience that they are suffering on a daily basis from the occupation. But after realizing that these Jewish people, that this Jewish delegation has nothing to do with occupation, is not responsible for the occupation, on the contrary, they totally oppose it, oppose it on a religious basis because of basics of, Jew of Jewish belief. Jewish people are forbidden to create a state of their own, and certainly we are forbidden to kill and steal, occupy and oppress an entire people. The message of peace of this meeting was special. This is something that the world should see every day. We should welcome steps towards peace and we should appreciate an approach to stop violence, to stop occupation, to stop oppression, and to turn the page to a nicer future. But what did the new extreme Israeli government choose to do instead? They arrested members of this delegation. And the question is why? Why did they take this so serious? Why did they find this so disturbing to them? And the answer is quite simple. It's because there are two very important points of propaganda that the Zionist movement is using in order to justify all what they're doing. One is the Jewish people are in danger and they need a state of Israel for protection. The second is that supposedly in their view, the Jewish religion condones all what they do. And all of this is totally false. What this meeting basically said, what this showed, the total contrary. Religious people standing up and clarifying that according to Judaism, the Jewish religion, all of this is totally wrong. And Jewish people can be in peace, have no problem, neither do the Palestinian people have any problem with the Jews as long as we don't support the occupation. This is what disturbed the Zionists so much. And Ben Gavir, the well-known extremist with his settler approach, being the Minister of Security, ordered the police to track down this delegation and arrest them. We consider this an affront on our, on our religion because this is attacking our religion. We are talking about religious people expressing, educating the message of the Jewish religion. This is an affront on basic rights, freedom of speech, which we should never allow to continue. We, can, we should not allow this to continue. We should remember that this conflict that we are experiencing today is not something that happened today. The peoples living in the Holy Land are living there already for a very long time. We lived in peace. We can live in peace. And this meeting proves this again, that we can live in peace. It is the occupation which is causing so much tragedies. When we find this new Israeli government, this extreme approach, this is just saddens every righteous person the world over. When we see that all these provocations, this entire occupation just taking a next level of more extremism, these provocations on Al-Aqsa, house demolition being threatened on a larger scale, and this goes on and on. We as Jewish people stand here Jew Jew and we condemn all what Israel is doing already for decades, including the harassment of religious Jewish anti-Zionists. We are sending a message of solidarity from here to our people in Palestine, to the Palestinian people in general. We are with you. We are against the occupation and we 
do everything we can to stop it. And to our Jewish oppressed people in Palestine, we send our solidarity in our encouragement to continue to oppose the state of Israel, to continue to oppose the philosophy of Zionism. And we are standing here in front of the United Nations and we are pleading with the representatives of the nations throughout the world to pressurize, to pressure the state of Israel, to stop all what they are doing and to release all prisoners, including the anti-Zionist Jews. Having this a joint uh, press conference, uh, we would invite Brother Sayal from the American Muslims of Palestine, a well-known activist for Palestine, for justice and for freedom, to address our press conference and to express his thoughts. Thank you. Good afternoon and good evening. Thank you, Rabbi. It's an honor to be here amongst my Jewish brothers in solidarity. Uh, I'm very proud of you guys. Uh, you're always standing for truth and justice. And it's not shocking that you'd even make the trip all the way to Palestine and Janine and stand with uh, people that just got out of jail after a 100-day strike, Maher al akhras And uh, this is Israel. This is what Israel does, you know. It's not surprising that they would put people in jail. Nothing is surprising from this state of Israel anymore, you know from house demolitions, to arresting people, to killing little children, to putting kids on the floor, wrestling to the ground and putting their knees on their neck, to training NYPD and other police forces here in the US how to kill people, just like we saw in Minnesota with George Floyd. These were tactics taught by Israeli you know, personnel in Israel. They get these tactics from them. And I think the world is starting to wake up little Slowly, you know, it's maybe way overdue, but people are starting to wake up in Europe. You know, you have the Irish parliament starting to call for boycotts and sanctions on the state of Israel. You see other uh, places in South America standing with Palestine and getting rid of their ambassador, you know, in South America. And I think one of Israel's biggest fears is seeing Jewish people starting to wake up and starting to say, not in our name. This does not represent Judaism. This does not represent our religion. You're hijacking a religion, a peaceful religion, and not in our name. Zionism is not Judaism. And I think that is the biggest fear Israel has, even when we're at rallies here in New York or New Jersey, and we see our brothers standing for Palestine with the Palestinian flags and their signs. The people, the Jewish people that are Zionists, they, they lose their mind when they see Jewish people against Israel and Zionism. You know, they lose it. They're like, how can you stand for Palestine? You know, you are Jewish, we're Jewish. Well, Jewish does not mean you're Zionist. You know, Jewish and people of the Torah stand for truth and justice, just as Muslims do, just as Christians do. But they try to flip the narrative that this is a war of religions, Muslims versus Jewish, Arab versus Jewish. This is not a religious war. This is not a holy war. This is just a fight of justice and truth. This is a colonial settler project of planting the state of Israel on Palestinian land to occupy and, and take more land and house demolition. And unfortunately, some people in Israel that are Jewish, happen to be Jewish, have been a little bit, you know, co-opted and brainwashed. But people are starting to wake up. You see actors like Seth Green and say, you know, they, they, I was, my whole life I was taught the wrong information. I was taught that Palestine was an empty land, you know, and there was no people there and that we went there and turned the desert green. And he said that wasn't true. And then you have ADL meeting him and saying, you know, no, you can't be talking like that. You can't be spitting facts out, you know. And then they even say, okay, we met with this actor, Seth Rogen, and he apologized. And then Seth Rogen will come out. You know, famous actors, sometimes they get more attention, right, than us coming here for the UN. It's like, no, I didn't apologize for it. You know, I appreciate what the ADL said, but still, I stand by what I said. You know, so people are starting to wake up. And they even did a survey that American Jews, especially the younger folk, about 48% are starting to lean more towards Palestine. They're seeing that what Israel's doing, what Zionism is doing, it's not in their name. 
And how do you get people to silence any critique of Israel? Anybody who wants to speak out against Israeli crimes, the killing, you know, the house demolitions, the checkpoints, how, what do you say? Just throw one statement at them, anti-Semitism, that's it. Silences all critique of killing and death and checkpoints. I come from a small village, Mukhmas, before the occupation, before the catastrophe, before the Nakba, we were considered part of Jerusalem, one of the villages, suburbs of Jerusalem. We're 15 minutes away. I have a US citizenship, so I'm literally, I could go right through the checkpoints. Sometimes they'll stop me if they see my wife with the hijab. And sometimes we just go, keep zooming and don't even listen to them. But my own family that lives in Palestine, so after the Nakba and 67, they considered us part of Ramallah, so you're part of West Bank, so you cannot go to Al-Aqsa. So people in my village, my cousin, who's just about my age, has never been to Jerusalem, never been to Al-Aqsa, the third holiest site in Islam. This is Israel. This is the country that we find some of our representatives fighting for tooth and nail and fighting any criticism. When you have some congressmen and women standing up for Palestine like Rashid Tlaib or Alhan Omar or AOC from New York, they get all this backlash and, and criticism. We should not have to watch our words when it comes to criticizing Israel and their policy, their execution policy. Last year was one of the deadliest years since the Intifada of how many people and children they killed. This is the country that our country here, US, gives billions, $4.4 billion just in military aid. What kind of world do we live in? The hypocrisy. And then when a person like me or one of the rabbis speaks up for justice for Palestine or a congressman or women or an athlete or an actor, you get a world of reigning of criticism, insulting, even calling for their jobs. You know, just because they're criticizing something as simple as just calling out the truth. Stop the killing, stop killing children, stop killing the elderly, stop demolishing houses in Palestine, stop demolishing houses in, in uh, all over Palestine. Simple calling for the truth scares Israel. And what the rabbis did, their heroic act, going there, standing in solidarity with our brothers and sisters in Jenin, and before that in Gaza, after the Gaza war, truly really, really appreciate your stance for justice, your stance for Palestine. It shows you are truthful and honest people. And anytime I thank my brothers and sisters, especially the rabbis from the Notre Carta, they, they get at me. They're like, don't thank me, this is our job. Just stop thanking me. I'm like, I can't thank you enough. Truly we are one, one cause, and any human being, being that stands for justice, stands for Palestine, and does not need a whole, you know, really deep look into what's going on there. You know, Netanyahu and these Israeli officials always like to tell the US that you are dumb. This is so complicated, it's so complicated. And then when they send them on paid trips to Israel, they don't show them the wall, the checkpoints, the Palestinians that are in jail, the refugee camps, the siege that's been on Gaza for over 15 years, where they have them on a calorie count of how much chocolate or strawberries or goods can enter. So I truly applaud you guys. We are in solidarity till Palestine will be free, all of Palestine. And this is a global cause for all people, Muslim, Jewish, Christian, non-believer. This is a tr anybody who calls for truth and justice sees what's going on in Palestine and stands for it. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Thank you, Sayal. Thank, Thank you very much. Rabbi Yisrael David Weiss, spokesman for Naturi Karte. Thank you, Sayal. This is a, 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 a true Palestinian, a true a human being who's created by God and speaks the truth. And uh, we've, we have a close friendship for many, many years. Uh, it's an uh, exemplary ex of, of a person who's coming from Palestine, whose origin is in Palestine, and how we live together for the hundreds of years in peace and brotherhood. And we really appreciate those warm words uh, as it refers to Jews. And that is the essence, what brings us out here today. So with the help of the Almighty, I pray to the Almighty to bestow upon me His truth, His wisdom, that I may be worthy of conveying His message, and inshallah so sanctify His name and bring peace to the world. We have been coming out as Jewish people 
not today, and not even the 75 years of this Nakba, of this terrible catastrophe, the state of Israel, but our rabbis, since the time Zionism raised its head in Europe, a movement of a transformation of Judaism from religion to nationalism, our rabbis and our communities throughout Europe from where Zionism really its essence came from, our rabbis in Europe immediately recognized this movement as heresy, as a movement that is purely evil. It is not Judaism, but it is a movement that is masquerading in my religion and Judaism in the name of God, in the Star of David, in holiness. And it is totally not that, but it is rooted in, and is, in essence, evil. They came up to Palestine to occupy for their selfish political reason to have their own state, but it is a flawed political movement. It ignores what Judaism is, Judaism is to be subservient to God, to accept the rule of God, and God tells us that we shall not occupy, we shall not steal, we shall not kill. Judaism, ironically, even forbade for the Jewish people since the destruction of the temple 2,000 years ago of us to have our own sovereignty. Zionism, in one fell swoop ignores everything but Judaism is, and yet they have the audacity to use the name Israel, Jacob in the Torah, to use the Star of David, to use everything that is holy in Judaism. And yet when our rabbis stand up and protest, which they've been doing, as I say, since Zionism started in Europe, and of course since Unfortunately, the state of Israel was ratified some 75 years ago. Our rabbis stood up in Jerusalem and our Quds and throughout Palestine, throughout occupied Palestine, and spoke out and pleaded with the world leaders and demanded that this creation should be immediately stopped. The state of Israel should be immediately disqualified to be amongst the the nations, the League of Nations. And that is why we are here in front of the United Nations here in New York to plead with the leaders of the world how much longer. Now this last week, one, a group, a, a delegation of rabbis from Palestine, of the religious Jews, the ones who refuse to capitulate for the state of Israel, continued on with this heroic message and went to Jenin to show solidarity and sympathy and support and brotherhood for this individual who fasted 103 days, a hunger strike in prison in the Israeli illegal occupation this fellow Maher al-Akras was finally, eventually, ultimately released because the Zionists simply could not take the pressure of the world. So this delegation of heroic rabbis broke through the Zionist roadblocks and went to visit him in Janin. And the Israeli government went ballistic. Yes. Today, they're considered that their people are, are condemning them for being extreme, the extreme right. But we don't say that they're their extreme right. They are what Israel is. They're just more open on what they're doing. They're more sincere in their occupation and the world is seeing the ugliness of Zionism. We are demanding and we are pleading with the world leadership that they should recognize what Israel is, what the occupation is. They talk about that the Jews 
As my colleague Rabbi Feldman said that the Jews need a safe haven by rebelling against God and by occupying another people. It's not only not a safe haven, but they are creating with their hands what we see, bloodshed of the Palestinian people and bloodshed of Jews. 75 years of the state of Israel is an endless river of blood. People don't have that long memory. But just let's look, since this last, the beginning of this year, almost a day didn't pass that a Palestinian child or some other innocent Palestinian was not murdered. This goes on continually. So this Rabbi Roth and his two and his other colleagues went to visit in Janin. In fact, we have a esteemed rabbi, a brother of Rabbi Roth came to stand with us here in New York in front of the United Nations. A brother of that Rabbi Roth to stand and to cry out to the world that we are Palestinians and we want a free Palestine. We do not accept the occupation that we are Jewish people around the world who our being in the Holy Land for these hundreds of years was not as a state of Israel and not as a Jewish state, but it was under the Palestinian people. It was under the governments that was and that we only want to be under them. We do not want and we will not accept this occupation. It is illegal. It is unacceptable. It is a rebellion against God. It is a rebellion against the Torah. They have no right to speak in our name. And that is the whole reason why the state of Israel arrested these individuals. Because they don't want this message of a Rabbi Roth. Of a sincere Jewish person who speaks the truth. Who speaks of Judaism. And tells what Judaism is. And tells the world what the Jewish community today. In our Quds in Palestine is screaming and pleading that we want to be under the Palestinian rule. They don't want the world to hear that. So they, they interrogate, they arrest. We have rabbis sitting in prison for months and longer. And of course we have the Palestinian people who speak up for years in prison. This is intolerable, this is intolerable, this is unacceptable. This is un-Jewish. This is against Judaism. How dare they speak in the name of my religion? How dare they speak as a Jewish nation? How dare they speak in the name of God and the Torah and humanity? And the joke that they call democracy. This is not democracy. This is dictatorship of the worst kind. This is stifling humanity. This is stifling every voice of righteousness. So I'm relaying the message of my colleagues here who are from four corners of the earth. We have rabbis from Jerusalem, from Al-Quds, and from Europe, and from New York, in front of the United Nations. We want the Palestinian people to take heart and be strong and know that the world will recognize that this is not a difference of religion, a conflict of religion, a conflict of different peoples, of Arabs or Jews fighting. This is simply an unacceptable political Zionist state of Israel against God's creations, against the Palestinians and against the Jews. And we want our Palestinian brothers and sisters, we hope they'll hear this, that Jews around the world are standing and crying for you. And we are praying to God for a free and speedy, peaceful dismantlement, a free Palestine, a free Palestine, and a speedy dismantlement of this impediment to peace design the state of Israel. We want our brothers, the Jewish brothers and sisters in Palestine who every day refuses to serve in the IDF and who wave Palestinian flags 
in Al Quds in Jerusalem, they should take heart and remember that the Jews around the world are standing together with Palestinian brothers and sisters around the world in support, and that the Almighty, ultimately, who is in His hand, this world, who always is compassionate, will eventually bring an end, a total end to this occupation and there will be a free Palestine where we'll be able to once again live together in peace and harmony as we've had for these hundreds of years. As us Jews, we will be able to show our gratitude to the Muslim and Arab communities and the Palestinian people for embracing us these hundreds of years. So inshallah, hopefully with God's help, with his compassion, he will bring an immediate dismantlement of the occupation it's in, in its entirety, an end to the Zionist state of Israel. This is unacceptable. We are proud to stand with our Palestinian brothers here who represent the Palestinian communities around the world. And we are proud to stand right here in front of the United Nations where they etched into the wall here, the Isaiah wall. They shall beat their swords into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. The verse in Isaiah, God should help with his compassion. We should re real, live this in real time in our days soon. Inshallah with the free Palestine. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now we, now we will hear some words from our uh, good friend Thomas Cox, a long time activist for Palestine, for peace and for humanity. Thomas. Shukran. And uh, so, uh, so I'm welcome everyone. Today we're all Palestinians and we're also all Jews standing together for what is right. Uh, I would like to tell you briefly about my uh, first uh, contact with Natura Karta and actually two of the, both rabbis are here today, Rabbi Feldman and Rabbi Weiss. And uh, uh, it was right about here. I think it was right at the, the park, right, right here anyway, in front of the United Nations. And it was a terribly cold day, raining, and it was a Palestine day. And I came out to stand in solidarity with my Palestinian brothers. But uh, uh, I noticed the Natura Karta people and I thought, you know, they're here. What, 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 what part do they have in this? How do they, uh, how can they be standing out here getting wet and cold? And uh, what, what is it in it for them? And uh, I went over and spoke to uh, Rabbi Feldman and I got the very clear message that this is because this is what they truly believe that God is calling them to do, to stand in solidarity with oppressed people, uh, no matter where they are. Uh, and I ha had a, a wonderful exchange with them. And then uh, not too long after I arranged to have them, uh, Rabbi Weiss and Rabbi Feldman come to my home because I was putting on an iftar. Now I'm a Christian, but I put on an iftar for my Muslim friends. And I thought, why not have these two rabbis come? And they were at that point not very well known for some of the people that I knew. And uh, in fact, there was a little bit of skepticism. Are they, are they legitimate? Are they real Jews? Are they really anti-Zionist? So what better way than to get people together uh, uh, over dinner and of course uh, the two rabbis could not eat because of their religious restrictions but the rest of us ate dinner and and uh, we talked and uh, we got to know each other and we found out that we didn't have differences we really were together on this um, you know Zionism really depends on a, a confusion uh, with as many people as they can confused about conflating Zionism and Judaism. 
really, they're, they're not anything similar at all. There are uh, Zionists who are, are not Jewish, and there are uh, Jews who are not Zionists. And I know many, many Jews who are, are, are anti-Zionist because they see what's wrong over there. It really started uh, before 1948, but the drama dramatic time was the Nakba of 1948 when three quarters of the Palestinian population was uh, expelled from their lands militarily. The, the lucky ones escaped with their lives. The unlucky who couldn't walk to Lebanon or Gaza or the West Bank, wherever they could, had to flee, uh, the, those lucky ones were expecting that they would be able to come back to their homes after a short time. It's now 75 years later and it has never happened. Contrary to the United Nations rulings, contrary to any understanding of justice in this world, and this goes on today, the big, the big mistake that Zionists made, I think, is that they didn't foresee the internet. Because today, we're getting all kinds of truthful information of what's going on over there. We, we have videos showing us exactly what's happening over there. And the Zionists are very worried because they're, they're losing their credibility, the, the false credibility, but they're losing the narrative. They're no, no longer able to control the narrative. And gradually, people everywhere are waking up and saying no to Zionism, no to uh, the expulsion of people. There are people in Gaza that can literally see the villages, the, the areas where they used to live. Uh, most of them are destroyed villages, uh, and, and forests were planted with uh, non-native trees to disguise the, the ruins of those villages and people are impoverished and it's all needless. And today uh, we just call on all people of conscience throughout the world to come out and learn more about what's happening there and spread the word and join with us no matter what religion or lack of religion we have, we can all speak up for equality and human rights. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thomas. We appreciate all participants, our friends that came uh, from New York and New Jersey. Uh, we do realize it's uh, last, it was la a last minute call and it's a working day. And definitely we appreciate the members of the press who find this uh, interesting enough for uh, the world to be able to see and to learn what is happening, facts on the ground. Thank you very much. If anybody has any questions, uh, myself or my wife, we are here to answer any questions. Rabbi Yisrael David Weiss of the Ture character, Jews United Against Lions. Thank you. And today's rally, what's the meaning behind it? Well, it was more of like a press conference and it was, it was just uh, rabbis getting together to be able to decry uh, and protest against uh, the flagrant uh, uh, human rights violations what the Zionist state, uh, the state of Israel, is doing continually to the Palestinian people. Almost the day doesn't pass by that a uh, Palestinian uh, child or innocent is not murdered. And, uh, um, and now they've arrested the, uh, some uh, Jewish uh, uh, activists who went out to visit and to show solidarity and sympathy and support to uh, somebody who was released from prison. They went to Janine from, uh, from Al Quds, from Jerusalem, some Jewish activists. And uh, this uh, evoked the ire of the uh, Israeli government and they had them arrested. Now I must state that um, um, my brothers and sisters, the Jewish brothers and sisters, are constantly getting arrested and beaten in, in Jerusalem. Uh, but the, the arrest now was uh, taken at another level, they simply were arrested because they went to visit somebody who gone, had gone on a hunger strike for 103 days and uh, was released and they went to visit him, these activists, and they were arrested for that and they went to Janine. Um, 
the on top of that, there is others, many others who are being arrested. There's a, uh, we have many pictures um, of Jews being beaten. Simply, we never, we never knew them. Uh, no, I, I gave the scarf to the brother for you. And and we are, uh, we we can't, we and children, you can see, it's unbelievable. They get arrested simply. They get beaten and arrested because they're demonstrating against the occupation in Palestine, and they show sympathy with the Palestinian people. Tens of thousands of people, Jews, uh, go out and demonstrate. Boys and girls who turn 17 get arrested because they refuse to serve in the IDF. Every boy and girl who turns 17 is a criminal by them. And we, our communities, the religious communities, refuse to, to stand and, uh, to, uh, with the state of Israel. They refuse to go to the army. Uh, we have, this is in New York, we, and, uh, as, uh, we stand in solidarity with our brothers and sisters in Palestine. So you see tens of thousands demonstrating, and this is in the state of, uh, this is in Jerusalem, Kikar Shabbos, this is in front of the White House. Hundreds of thousands go demonstrate over there. Why? Because the concept of occupying, of having the state of Israel in its essence is against our Torah. We as Jews are, are Jewish. That means to be subservient to God. The concept of making a national home, of making a state, is a transformation to nationalism and was never, from day one, was refuted, was not accepted by our rabbinical authorities. And we, our the very religious communities, as you see here, the representatives here by this, in front of the United Nations, this delegation, or if you will go to our large communities here in New York, right across from Manhattan and Williamsburg or in Jerusalem, they all stand in solidarity with the, that we are not to have a state, we are not to occupy the Palestinians, it should be a free Palestine. We are not to kill what they're doing, uh, all the, the, the terrible crimes they're doing to the Palestinians, and simply would not to have this idea of uh, uh, and the existence of the Zionist State of Israel. Perfect. Thank you very much.